Okay, I'm back. Uh, we've just finished our discussion of tar, and now we're going to discuss a few of the other commands we have that will do backups for us. Uh, the first one is rsync. rsync is a very important command, um, and um, I'll show you a few things about rsync. rsync, in principle, just copies a file from one location to another, even even from one machine to another across the internet or across the local area network. Uh, it has really cool features in that it only copies files that have been changed. So it's like being able to keep kind of a mirror disk out of sync. It's not mirrored like disk mirroring like RAID, but it's it's slowly mirrored. You can keep a copy of your stuff, and then you can update that every now and then. It only copies files that have been um, uh, updated or changed. So it um, so if a file doesn't need to be copied across the internet, it doesn't, or across the land, it doesn't copy it. Or you can do it just locally from one disk to another disk on your on your workstation, but but it only copies files that need to be copied. So it so the first time it can be really slow. It's every bit as slow as the cp minus a command, maybe slower. But once it's got things pretty well done, then all it's doing is copying your updates so that. Um, um, so that um, it, it can be very fast. So often what you do is you do the first copy with um, the uh, with the disk right next to your workstation, and then you take the disk across the country, and from then on you can do it over the internet. And if you do it every day or every couple of days, you know the updates go quite fast. I should mention that all of these commands see uh, tar. CPIO, rsync, all have um, some sort of incremental options, too. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the incremental options on rsync. Um, actually, I'm not at all familiar with those. Um, but, but I believe they're there. And they definitely are for TAR and CPIO. Um, so let's look a little bit at um, rsync. The way we're going to look at rsync is we're not actually going to use it, but I do want to show you a little bit about rsync. Of course, there is a man, com man command for rsync, rsync. That is extensive. There's a lot on the internet about rsync because rsync is probably the most popular backup command today, to the best of my knowledge. It runs on Windows platforms. It runs on Linux. It runs on every Unix. Um, and it's used a lot because we can sync disk because we've, as, as we have moved away from using tape to using disk as our backup media, our sync is used a great deal. Um, OK, maybe it's not quite as common as TAR yet. I, I'm not sure. Uh, for a backup, though, it probably is as common as TAR. It may not be as common as just burning a, um, um, oh, a DVD, but it, it's very common. Um, so let's look a little bit now. RSync has a lot of commands, a lot of options, and you basically have to spend some time reading and studying RSync before you can use it. it and a little like CPIO, I almost always put my RSync commands into a script and, and save them in a script so I don't have to redo this every time. Whereas tar is so easy, I just do that all the time. The other thing I want to say about rsync is if you rsync like to a Windows machine, that's kind of like doing a copy over the network to a Windows machine. And what's the big difference? You know, can I back up my data to a Windows, my Linux data to a Windows machine? Or can I back up my Windows data to a Linux machine? Well, I don't know. Um, the big difference is the Linux machine typically has Linux disk. OK, it could have NTFS or a, a 
a Windows disk, but 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 basically a Linux machine we expect it will have a Linux disk which means a Linux-like security model. A Windows system is going to have an NTFS disk, which means a Windows-like security model. So when you do copies of files from the Windows disk to the Linux disk, you lose the Windows security model. And that makes it hard to recover. When you do copies of the Linux data, the uh, over to the Windows disk, yes, you keep all the data, but you lose the security information, which makes it hard to recover. For that reason, often what we do is we will make a big tarball of our data and then copy that to the Windows system because that will keep our security model intact. Um, so uh, often when we do backups, going to a strange operating system with a different security model, we will bundle all of our stuff into a CPIO or a tar-like ball, move that, and then so if we have to recover that back from that, we have all the uh, access rights the way they should be. Um, also, in the case of CPIO files, you have all your special files, which also won't copy onto, say, the Windows machine. Uh, things like, um, uh, uh, well, hard links, soft links. Actually, those go to TARs, but uh, TAR can do uh, can accept links, but it can't do the special files in a slash dev directory. Um, CPIO will do all of that stuff for you. RSync really doesn't do that because it's more like a copy thing. But RSync works great going Linux machine to Linux machine, Linux machine to Unix machine. And if you use it to go to a Windows machine, well, you probably want to do some tarballs or something. Um, um, or if you're preserving stuff from a Windows machine on your Linux machine, I don't know. It might work just fine if you preserve it onto an NTFS disk. Um, that that I don't know about. I I'd, I'd have to study that. I won't guarantee that. But going to a Linux disk, you'd lose your Windows security information um, or some of the information that's embedded in the Windows uh, file system. Okay, let's look a little bit at what. Uh, the way we might use um, um, rsync, and I'm going to look at rsync just from the um, from the uh, from my scripts. Here's a script I have. Actually, I've got a comment file up here. This is just an interesting side note. Here's some place where I used CPIO in pass-through mode. And look at all the options I used on this. Look at all the options I used on the find command. Um, I'll let you read about those. Um, but let's go down here and let me see if I can find where I want to find uh, the area I want to find here. Um, well, I guess everything is commented out. Well, we'll just look at this one command. This one command here is, um, I've outlined it here, and it is um, time. Oh, well, time just said, tells me how long the command takes it to run. It has nothing to do with the command itself. And it's rsync avx now what the a does is says make the arc uh, make the uh, make this copy in archive mode so save all the access rights the date time modified everything all the meta information about the file save that and transfer that uh, v says make a listing of what you're doing as you do it x says as i recall it says don't go on to mounted file systems, just stick to the file system that I named. Um, uh, minus E space SSH allows me to use the SSH as the um, 
It does all the copying using um, uh, through an SSH, SSH tunnel. So it uses all the SSH features. Um, if SSH does some compression, um, uh, some encryption, whatever SSH does. Uh, this is kind of a dumb option to use here because it just slows things down. And I'm going from um, one machine. Uh, I'm staying on the same machine, just from one directory to another. So that was sort of a dumb thing to do. But it, it works. You don't really need that option at all. Even going with a remote machine, you don't need that option, although I would use it if I was going to a remote machine. Minus minus delete says that if my target um, a tree is, um, it says that if 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 my um, my source tree if I delete a directory, then when I'm doing this copy and I find that there's a directory on the target that is missing from the source, I should delete that directory. So. If I really want to keep these things in sync, I want to use minus, minus, delete. Minus, minus, force, I don't remember. I suspect that says don't ask a lot of questions as I do this. Um, slash u is actually, I, on this system, I have a directory called slash u. So that's the source directory. And the destination directory is slash backup disk slash u. And then that does the direct, that does the copy that updates my U for me. Okay, let's look up here just a little ways. If I can, there we go. This area in here, which I hope shows up, is basically just some documentation that I wrote on the. Um, on the rsync command. It's the same thing you'll find in rsync, um, man space rsync. And it says what all these things do. Dash A says make an archive. Dash C says always use checksums, um, which is slow. Dash Z says compress everything, which is slow, unless I'm doing it over slow data lines. Slash V says uh, use for both mode. Slash X says, stay on my local file system. Um, OK, they're basically just what I told you they were. Let's look at another option on the find sync command. We're going to go out here to this guy here. And this command right here, the last command, the maybe the only command, um, says, to do a um, rsync, and I'm using mostly the same options. I do use the Z option on this guy, um, but mostly I'm using the same options. And I'm copying a top-level directory called VM, which happens to be where I keep all my VMware virtual machines. And here, in this case, I am copying it to an IP number. Um, to a directory, well, so that copies it to another machine on my network, actually. But it copies it to another machine. It puts it in the backup directory under SCO um, 302. So that makes a backup going across the network. This does assume that I have SSH keys set up. Um, Otherwise, no, actually, this would probably ask me for a password if I don't have my SSH keys set up. But, but if I was doing this from a script, I would make sure my keys were set up so I don't have to type any passwords or anything like that. Um, OK, um, we're about coming to an end here. Um, I have a few other commands to um, to uh, talk about. Um, rsync is a really good command. Um, other commands to talk about is um, 
we will start up on the next part of the video and talk about those. Okay, bye-bye.